Hi, my name is Lane McCall, and today we're going to go over the last little bit of fine tuning you should do to your image before you export it. So once I touch up the image and I apply the frequency separation technique to it, I then like to apply the dodge and burn. And then the last little bit of fine tuning I like to do before exporting involves, you know, bringing out the liquify tool and just kind of fine tuning those edges a little bit. I also like to clean up the hairline areas and get rid of any, you know, unnecessary frizz. And then the last thing I like to do is creating new layers, setting them to overlay, and just kind of touching up the lips and the eyes and just kind of making them pop a little bit. So let's hop into Photoshop and I'll show you all how I do this. Okay, and now we are on the last part of this three-part video series here, and uh, I'm just going to go into fine-tuning the image and getting it ready for export. So as you can see here, uh, we have the touch-up done, frequency separation done, dodge and burn done. And um, I hope you guys are following along. It will just make it a little bit easier for you all. Um, now we are going to go ahead and do the liquify. Now with this last little bit of fine tuning, there's no specific order you need to go in because you could justify any order. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of this. And I'm just going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to merge the layers. All right. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to liquify. So I'm going to go into filter and liquify. Now, I know there are a lot of mixed opinions on using this tool. Some people like to totally transform the body into something else. I personally don't really do that. I just kind of fine tune edges and whatnot, like clothing that, you know, just like, you know, certain wrinkles that are just kind of stood out or, you know, something like that. Or sometimes whenever a model has their arm kind of smashed against their side, it kind of gives a really warped looking arm. So I just kind of fine tune things. I'm not necessarily trying to change a body's characteristics. All right, so let's just grab the forward warp tool here. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of bring in some of these areas a little bit. And you can see here that it's actually affecting the side of the image. That's fine. It's something we can fix later. It's definitely not a big deal. Okay. And um, this is just one of those things. I'm not necessarily going to show you guys how to do it. Um, I just kind of play around with it. See, like all I'm doing here is I just, I felt like there was just a little too much going on here on this side of the image. And I just kind of wanted to clean that up just a little bit. So just kind of play around with the tools. Like right now I have the push left tool. Uh, when you go uh, up, it's going to uh, push everything left. When you go down, it's going to push everything right. So it's going to do that. And um, let's see here. There's the smooth tool. And already, guys, I'm happy with that. So as I turn the liquify layer on and off, you can see that it's a pretty subtle change. All I really did was just kind of push that shirt in a little bit. You see Nadine was wearing this kind of baggy shirt, but uh, I just wanted to just kind of form her body just a little bit better. That's something that I can do in post. So just an example of how I might use liquify. Um, now we're gonna go into uh, kind of touching up the hairline. Now, to be honest, um, looking at her face right here, actually, I'm totally happy with the way her hair turned out in front of her face. But like over here, for an example, I'm really not seeing a lot of frizz. I do see a lot of hair kind of, you know, all messy over here on this side. But stuff like right up here above her arm and right here above her finger and this little bit out here, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. Like I said, I like to create layers after everything I do. Right here, I'm just going to name this hair removal. And um, I'm going to go use the pin tool. So let me zoom in just a little bit here. Zoom out just a tad. All right, so I'm going to start right above her wrist. And I'm just going to start marking off these points that we're eventually going to turn into a selection. All right. There we go. And now I just need to close it off. All right, and then you just right click in the middle here, you click make selection, and you can feather the radius anywhere between one to five pixels, depending on what kind of image you're working with. One to two is usually what I do. Now I'm just gonna click okay. Now I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool right here, and I'm gonna click option, and I'm just gonna start just kind of painting this in. And all I'm doing is just covering up that hair with other areas of the image. 
and look at how quick and easy that was. I am now done. So yeah, you guys can take as much or as little time um, as you want with this part of uh, touching up the image. I personally try to just make this a real quick, you know, two to three minute touch up, like right here on her knuckles. You know, I could probably do a little better job right there. But like I said, I'm just showing you all my techniques and you all can uh, manipulate them to fit your needs. All right, so now that we have hair removal, the last thing I like to do one more duplicate, and I'll usually just name this final because like I said, I'm happy with the image. Frequency separation, dodge and burn, the liquefy, the hair removal. Now we're on the final image and we're just gonna touch it up just a little bit more. There's multiple ways to do this. I prefer to work in layer. Some people prefer to work in mask, you know, like using the curves tool or hue and saturation, but I got a new layer here. I'm just gonna name it lips and uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We're gonna go over here. And uh, if you hit option and you click around, you can see the color of these lips. Now, the weird thing is, um, I always make the lips a bright red unless I'm going after a very different look. Um, it just happens to be that whenever you put this on overlay and uh, you reduce the opacity, a darker or more pronounced red always just ends up looking a little bit better. So I'm just gonna kind of outline her lips a little bit here as you guys can see the flow is on nine you can turn it all the way up or you can turn it all the way down it just depends on how much of this effect you want to apply to the image all right so i'm happy with that now i'm going to set the blend mode to overlay and i'm going to turn the opacity down to like i don't know maybe like nine or ten so let's go ahead and zoom out i'm just going to toggle it on and off you see it very subtle but it just adds a little bit more warmth to her lips now I'm gonna zoom back in here. And okay, so her eyes. A lot of people go ahead and dodge and burn the eyes um, whenever they're applying the standard dodge and burn technique, but I actually like to do them last just so that I can look at the image and so that I don't overdo it in the end. So I'm actually gonna open up a new dodge. So I'm gonna go to curves, select the same button that I did last time, and I'm just gonna kind of bring it up a little bit. Command I to inverse it, and I'm just gonna name it eyes. I'm gonna select the brush tool. I'm gonna do the inverse color, and now I can make these brighter. I don't wanna do it too much because I like the dramatic look that I have with this image. I really like the lighting that I have, but as you can see here, that really just pronounces the eyes and makes them pop just a little bit more. Now that they're a little brighter and they're where I want them, now I can adjust the color. So once again, I'm gonna go to a new layer here. I'm gonna go to option. And I already, I've worked with Nadine enough that I already know the color of her eyes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just go with this bright orange. Just like with the lips, guys, I always like to go above and beyond what the color actually is because once you adjust the opacity, um, you won't be able to see as much color. All right, so. I usually just kind of highlight the eyes a little bit. And then I'm gonna go right here to overlay and turn the opacity down to about 50. It's a pretty dark area, so you're not gonna be able to see a lot of that color, so 50 will do just fine. And as you can see here, there they are. Actually, I might turn that down just a little bit more. Let's go about right there. All right, and last but not least, got to put the Lane McCall Photography watermark on it. I'm just going to go ahead and just make that a little smaller. Bottom right-hand corner, right where I like it. I am finished with this image. This is a very compelling looking portrait. We've applied the frequency set, the dodge and burn, and then we fine tuned the image and I'm really happy with these results. All right, so that wraps up this three part video series. A lot of time and effort went into this. So if you enjoyed what you just watched and learned something new, please be sure to give the videos a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please consider doing so because like I said, I plan on releasing at least one video or photography related video every week here on YouTube. So stay tuned for all the new awesome content that I'll be releasing soon. So get out there and start shooting and have some fun. And don't forget to tag me in your work and hashtag Lay McCall Photography. Take it easy guys. My name is Lay McCall.